can turn to the Oberai group, which hosted our wonderful dinner last night. I want to thank Vikram Oberai for that. Wasn't it, wasn't it amazingly magical? So many surprises and, uh, and the connectedness, getting to share with different people at dinner was wonderful. Completing our trio of personal stories from highly successful businessmen, we turn to Kapil Chopra, the president of the Oberai Group of Hotels. A veteran of over 20 years in the hotel industry, he was a key figure in the expansion and development of this amazing award-winning property the whole complex, the Oberai and the Trident here. He was awarded Hotelier of the Year from Hindustan Times in 2012. But besides being a leader in the hotel business, he's also an avid collector of Indian contemporary art and contributes regularly to various national and international publications. He actually founded The Wall, India's first art e-magazine. Here to share his perspective, Kapil Chopra. So following uh, two illustrious speakers, uh, fantastic good morning, everybody. Uh, I thought I'll try and walk, because I was just thinking, should I stand here or should I stand there? So and I thought I should maybe just, just walk, and I think that's going to be easier. So yeah, so just taking you through. Uh, it was, it's wonderful meeting all of you, and one of the key reasons to do the summit on a personal level was, if you looked at that photograph, I'm really losing a lot of hair. So if anybody's got an idea on how, do I, how I can grow back my hair, you know, means I'm really looking for that spine wellness solution. And so is Vikram Oberoi, actually, yeah? So both of us, really. So, so starting off, uh, I thought, you know, uh, it was wonderful and uh, could interact with only a very few people uh, throughout the conference. It's been uh, two power pack days. So why don't I just take you through a brief history of what are we really as a company? Because for, uh, at the end of the day, we are, we're still a very small hotel company. We only operate in six countries. Uh, Pepsi operates in something like 180 countries. I can get the entire hall together, you won't be able to name 180. Yeah? But uh, Pepsi operates in 180 countries, we just operate in six countries. So what makes us very different as a hotel company? And I thought I'd just share that with you. So uh, starting off really, uh, I thought I'd, I'd, I'd name this presentation Guts to Glory. Uh, and for a, for a particular reason that uh, our founder, Rai Bahadur M.S. Oberoi, actually started working in a hotel before he actually owned that hotel and built this phenomenal company. Uh, it's an 80-year-old legacy. And honestly, we actually, as a company, don't do anything else. We just do hotels. We don't understand anything else. We just understand hotels. Okay, And that's, that's really been our core competence, our core founding philosophy. Uh, it all began with a dream, actually. Uh, Rai Bahadur Mohan Singh Oberoi, our, our founder, he was an employer, uh, and he became the owner of a small uh, hotel in Clarks in Shimla. Shimla is uh, in the hills of Himachal. Uh, it, it, was, it used to be the summer capital uh, when the British uh, ruled this country till 1947. It used to be the summer capital. And in 1934, he became the owner of his, this small hotel. We still operate this hotel to date. It's, it's very nice. It's very quaint. It's got a lot of history. Uh, but like everything that happens in life, uh, today we operate three hotels in Shimla, including the award-winning Wildfire Hall in the Himalayas. And you can see, just surrounded by pine forests, it's pretty much a private sanctuary. Uh, so I think one of the key things that Rai Bahadur M.S. Oberoi did for the Indian hospitality industry was uh, that he tried to challenge every single norm that was there, uh, you know, from an India perspective, uh, from, from every single perspective. So in 1965, so that's, that's how old pretty much, and the Taj Bombay has been an iconic landmark much before that, but in terms of a green field project being built into this country, uh, the first five-star hotel in this country was built in 1965. That gives you a perspective of the Indian hospitality business. It was India's first luxury hotel, still stands today, one of the leading hotels in New Delhi, on the edge of a golf course. And that's the Oberoi in Delhi, opened in 1965, and it challenged the paradigm in 1965. Please remember that the Indian economy actually only opened in 1991. So, you know, we, we've just been in the liberalization phase for the last 22, 23 years. So in 1965, 25, 30 years even before we opened, uh, means before the economy opened, we opened a luxury hotel, and that was the Oberoi in Delhi. For the first time in India, 
there were private butlers, there were employment for ladies, there were no rules. So when, when the country became independent in 47, after that, there were no rules for employment of ladies. They hadn't even thought of it. Okay? So then that was the first hotel which actually fought the system, bureaucracy, everything, and said, no, no, but you know, ladies are an equal and very, very, actually more than an equal part of the hospitality business, and we really need to have them in the hotels. And that's how, that was the first paradigm that we had to break. There was no concept of in-room dining or housekeeping, because it was the first luxury hotel opening means, you know, means, so that's, that's, uh, that's how challenging it was. And in-room telephone services means, means, you guys must be saying, is this guy drunk in the morning? Means what is he saying, in-room telephone services? Okay, but, uh, but in 1965, it was a real big thing. Uh, today, the hotel has a temperature, temperature controlled indoor infinity pool, the only one in the city, actually, in Delhi. That's the only indoor full-length pool. And it has an outdoor expansive pool also. So today, it's moved to a new level of luxury. Uh, but I think one of the biggest contributions that post Rai Bahadur, I think our current chairman, Mr. Oberoi, who's 85 and very, very involved every day um, and phenomenally passionate about hotels, has done is he's actually tried to look at Indian cities and create destinations. So Agra, uh, the land of the Taj Mahal, where we opened a hotel, Oberoi Amar Vilas, I'm going to talk about it, Jaipur. Uh, a lot of you are going to Agra and Jaipur, and I'm aware of that, uh, where you will see this. We created a hotel called the Oberoi Raj Vilas, where Mr. Vikram Oberoi actually was the first general manager of that hotel. Udaipur by the Oberoi Uday Vilas, and Ranthambore is a wildlife, uh, it's basically a tiger park um, in, uh, in India, where we opened the Oberoi Vanne Vilas. So this Vilas hotels, as they're called in India, laid the new foundation of luxury in this country. Because till that time means there was hardly any hotels which could really qualify into the luxury market. So Taj Mahal deserves more than just a day. I remember there was so much debate. I was in the company that time when we were opening the Oberoi Amar Vilas. People go to the Taj Mahal in the morning, see the Taj Mahal, seventh wonder of the world, beautiful, outstanding, get into the car or the bus and come back. That's what people used to do in Agra, okay? And we decided to put up a hotel there, okay? Nobody stayed in Agra. I mean, Agra, even today, the biggest challenge is infrastructure when you go there in the city itself, uh, in spite of so many years. But but when we were doing the Amar Vilas, there were two choices that we had. The choice was that should every room face the Taj Mahal, or we could still build 100 rooms which did not face the Taj Mahal. So it could be a 210 room hotel instead of a 110 room hotel that it is today. And our, our chairman took the call that let's sacrifice 100 rooms. Let's only open 110 rooms. So from every room, from, from the lobby, from the restaurant, you see the magnificent Taj Mahal, the seventh wonder of the world, the reason I think more than 50% of people come to India. And, and, that was, and that is commitment to luxury, I think. So actually, we, we try to change the paradigm in every single thing that we do. Destination hotels in India, I remember 1997. I used to be a front office manager in that beautiful golf course hotel that you saw, the Oberoi in Delhi. And personally, going back that many years, I never believed that Jaipur could be a three-night destination. Because India always had palaces, always, and magnificent palaces. Okay, but there was no focus on running those palaces from a luxury perspective, which I think, honestly, the Taj is doing very well today. Okay, but at that time, there was no focus on running it as anything luxury. They were quite run down. Um, service was inconsistent, to say the least. They were magnificent, but not as clean as they, they are today. And the Oberoi Raj Vilas was born out of that, that why cannot we create a hotel which can even beat a palace in its experience? And why can't great service come into this country? Uh, in terms of that. And that's where we did the Oberoi Raj Vilas. And it created Jaipur into a destination, and today people go and stay in Jaipur for three nights, which was unimaginable uh, 10 years back. Sorry, I just... Uh, and that was the talk that I said. Jaipur has only 100-year-old palaces. Best wild ride resorts are in Africa. That's what we always heard when we were doing the Oberoi Vanne Vilas, because we were doing a luxury tented accommodation in Ranthambore. You know what is the rate in Ranthambore before we opened? And, and just to give you an idea, I mean, I just put the rate up here because $600 does not signify that a hotel has to be good. There are many hotels which charge these kinds of rates and have inconsistent service. But our first market survey in Ranthambore indicated that the consumer was willing to pay a price of $50. Ranthambore was a $50 market. Average price in Ranthambore was close to $40. Yeah? And we decided to go in with a $600 a night hotel. This winter, as I speak to you, in November, 19 days are sold out as I speak to you. You can't even get in. It's already gone, finished, okay? So we try to create a destination. We try to bring in service. And there's a lot of cost of infrastructure in these destinations. Because unlike the Europe or United States, 
um, or even some cities in Asia where infrastructure is always there, we don't have infrastructure. Every single hotel is backed up with power in this country. Uh, so the cost of operating are, are much, much, much more. A lot of things that we take for granted, like electricity, water supply, are still getting there. It means we're still an emerging economy, so it takes that level of time. Uh, so this is the overall one of us. Uh, tigers up and close, uh, close and personal, the highest sightings for tigers anywhere pretty much in the world. India has good hotels, but not the world's best. That's something that we heard all the time. So we tried to create Uday Vilas. And I remember Vikram and I talking, and I said, you know, maybe in our lifetime, uh, I don't think we'll ever be able to build a hotel like Uday Vilas again. Okay, it means it is outstanding, it's, it's exceptional, and I'm not saying this because I work in this company, but it is a hotel that you should definitely put on your must visit list because it is, it is really something. And we can't do it again, it means how many people will come on stage, everybody from a marketing perspective will come on stage and say, you know what, we'll do another 10 of these hotels. So please only stay with us. No, we can't do this again, I mean, this is phenomenal. And it won the world's best hotel in the United States by the readers of Travel Plus Leisure, and the funny part is we won Condé Nast's world's best, we won Travel Plus Leisure's world best, and we don't operate a single hotel in Europe or the US, and we won these awards because the subscribers loved it. These were Reader's Choice Awards, we don't own any hotels, either in the United States or Europe. Okay, in spite of that, a hotel in Udaipur won the world's best twice over. In the city of lakes, we brought the lake to the hotel, so in this hotel you can swim from one room to another, instead of walking. Yeah. <laughs> so, in city hotels, the hotel that you are in, everybody tells you real estate is expensive. And India is one of the most expensive real estate markets in the world. We said every square feet matters, let's change that. Let's build in a hotel which has the largest room size for any city hotel in the world, which is the Oberoi at 620 square feet where you are staying right now. Okay, thank you. Everybody said that, I'll, I'll, you know, you can always do a great hotel. It means at the end of the day, you're in a suburb of New Delhi. It's called Gurgaon. You're in the new business district. It's not the heart of the city, but you couldn't do a leading luxury hotel. It means the readers voted us, Condé Nast, World Travel Awards. Pretty much the best. Backward integration, if it wasn't there, and that's our founder and our chairman standing, uh, if it wasn't there, we created it. In 1959, we were the first to start flight catering operations because flights in India, when they landed into India, were not confident that they were getting great food. So we started it. In 1966, we established the Oberoi Center of Learning and Development. For the last 50 years, we've been training managers. So a lot of people, I remember at lunch, asked me yesterday, why, is, why does service work in this hotel? And I said, it's so easy for me. It means I've got a great job. I've got great people who've been trained for the last 50 years, ingraining the entire service culture in them. So it's, it's a real cool job for me. Uh, we realized that the quality of collateral was not great in this country. We set up a printing press. So when it was not there, we did it just so that, and today the printing press doesn't supply only to Oberoi hotels, but to a lot of hotels. There were no private jets. We started Oberoi Aviation and travel agencies, there were very few travel agencies opening in the country that time, and we started Mercury Travels, okay? And, but I guess in spite of all these buildings and everything, the ultimate differentiator for us is that principle, people are our principal asset and our key to success. And actually, this hotel would be nothing if you did not have the great people serving you here and there, everywhere. I end um, with a statement by our chairman. We want to be the best and not the biggest. We never started out to be the biggest hotel company uh, in the world. We just want to be the best. We, we just run hotels and we love doing what we do every single day. The world's leading luxury hotel brand voted by World Travel Awards in 2012. World's best hotel brand voted by readers of Travel Plus Leisure in 2013. And only 28 hotels. <laughs> Two luxury cruisers, one motor vettels, and we only operate in six countries. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Have a great day. It's fantastic. Thank you.